ESL podcast. I'm so sorry about the last podcast. I didn't even put my outro like, uh, this is your host as always. I didn't even put that. I'm very sorry. But anyways, today is part two. That's right, people. We're going to be getting into the part two with one of my wonderful students from Azerbaijan. And so, again, we kind of limited it. Her storytelling was great from top to bottom. Oh, as a matter of fact, I'm supposed to tell you guys this after the podcast itself. So what I'm going to do before I get into all that craziness is first I need to allow you to listen to it so you can assess and then both you and I can compare our assessments. So without further ado, here we go. Okay. Okay. So anyways, yeah, this is all. Okay. All right. Here we go. All right. So here we go. Part two. It says describe a book that you enjoyed, past tense, reading because you had to think a lot. Okay. okay. So make sure you answer the first part, what this book's what this book was, the second one, why you decided to read it, the third one, what mm-hmm. reading this book made you think about, and the fourth one, explain why you enjoyed reading it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm going to give you no more than a minute to prepare. Okay, thank you. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Uh-huh. Yes. All right, so here we go. Are you ready for it? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Can I start or? Yep, yep, go ahead. Okay, so I'm going to uh, talking about my uh, favorite books, uh, which um, it is uh, Zardish Say This. I don't know exact translation. Maybe there is some uh, um, little differences. But uh, this uh, book, uh, uh, this book's author uh, was a Friedrich Nietzsche. Uh, you know, uh, he he was a great a great German philosopher. And uh, when I uh, studied at uh, studied at philosophy. Uh, I, I have I had a great uh, interest uh, for this uh, subject, and I uh, was deciding to uh, read uh, several books, and one of them uh, was uh, uh, this this book. Uh, and uh, Friedrich Nietzsche uh, was a popular their um, uh, their uh, uncommon uh, souls, and one of uh, and they uh, they were uh, about life uh, and the society uh, which uh, which were not uh, common. And uh, when I uh, started to read these books, uh, I felt uh, uh, bad uh, because of my uh, personal uh, some personal uh, points but uh, after reading these books i have i had uh, felt that uh, i had uh, i i was uh, so uh, strong and uh, on the other hand uh, i decided to change uh, my uh, my, uh, my some uh, thoughts about life and society uh, and i think uh, it um, it helped me uh, to start everything again. Uh, and uh, I, I, I would uh, recommend these books for all. Uh, maybe uh, this book uh, was a little bit uh, um, old fashioned, but uh, you, you can find uh, some points which, uh, really, uh, which can really help you 
Yes, that's all. Excellent. Good timing. Great compound adjective. Old fashioned, a variety of things. You took me through the journey. You opened it up with the great in intro, then referenced your past. You gave personal examples. Again, I'll get in all the details with you uh, in regards to, you know, your grammar, your linkers, this and that. I'll write it all down. I'll have to listen to it again and whatnot. But, um, yes. okay, all right. So, yes. you know, I'm really happy because what, what happens is this specific question, if I ask some of my Thai students this question, they've never read books. <laughs> And so really? I'm like, yeah, I swear. I'm like, okay, so, uh, you know, describe a book that you enjoyed reading. They're like, I never read a book. I'm like, dude, you're like 18 years old. What's happening? Now, don't, don't get me wrong. I haven't read books like when I was young too, but now me being a coach and everything, I read a lot. But yes. yeah, that was great. I'm so glad you Thank scored you. that really well. Like the structure and Thank everything. We'll get into the grammatical resources, lexical phrases after, but... Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. You got it. Uh, uh, my uh, is my grammar uh, bad or normal? <laughs> I, I I am concerned about it. Yeah. Th 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 this is the thing that I normally hear a lot with a, you know with a number of different people is some people are really good at changing tenses, right? Going present yes. perfect, future perfect. Okay. Future yes. simple. Okay. Conditional. O conditional. One conditional. Two conditional. Go back to the past. Some people are very good at that. You, that's one of your weaknesses, is jumping uh -huh. from tense to tense. Because again, I said at the very beginning, I said enjoyed as in past tense. Now, I remember hearing your past continuous, but then you started like, as you spoke more and you do it very naturally, just as I do it very naturally, the tenses, yes. they start to go, oh, she made a little grammatical there. Oh, a little, here, a little one here, a little one here, a little one here. If we could yes. somehow limit that, it would be very good in the end. Okay, thank you. You're very, very welcome. Welcome back, guys. All right, so here we go. You guys have assessed. We are finally here, and we can now break it down. So like I was saying in the beginning, she needs to add some mechanics to her storytelling, but her storytelling is fantastic. She had a great opening statement too. You know what I'm so quick, you know what I'm so amazed about is the fact that folks in Azerbaijan they do have that ability. They have the ability to uh, you know, we were talking about books. Boy, if I asked any of my Thai students that, they would be like, "Oh, well, I don't read books." They would be lost. But her, she was just able to take it and just go. So that was that's magnificent. All we have to do is the constant disruptions. We're going to have to somehow limit that. Now, was it better than the part one? Yes, it was. But I gave her some references and I said, hey, try using an audio journal and use intonation in. And, you know, add that emphasis to stress particular words. Slowing it down, right? Those linkers can really help her when she comes to stuttering. Now, yes, it was a little bit less than this time, but again, limit, limiting those, uh, the, the constant stuttering, it can enable her. So, guys, again, a mirror exercise is like, okay, let me try speaking this out loud, right? And if I actually open up one of these books right now, this is going to be, let's see if there's a little write-up. I don't know if they're right. No, nope, there's no write-up in here. But let me hurry up and grab a book so I can do a write-up so you guys understand what I'm saying. So here we go. She, she speaks at a very, uh, I wouldn't say an adrenaline style pace, but if she can add those linkers, it would sound something like this. In 1950, the percentage of the world's population living in urban areas was 30%. By 2014, the figure had increased to 54%, and it is predicted that by 2050, two-thirds of us will be living in cities. I don't want her to sound exactly like me you guys probably won't get that rhythm it takes a lot of time but understand the words that you heard me stressing in those particular those two particular sentences so again what i would tell her to do is grab that grab any book and i would want her to read it out loud in the mirror at least 10 minutes a day to practice her overall fluency and her efficiency this could somehow begin to nag away and just chip away on that constant stuttering. 
So that's exactly what I referenced over to her. So if you guys have that same problem, it's okay. Just grab a book, read the book out loud in a mirror exercise, and continue doing that 10, like 10 minutes a day. She doesn't have a stutter problem. It's just she adds too many interjections that she is completely and unconsciously aware of when she's trying to gather her thoughts. So, guys, I hope that helped you. If you guys have any questions, you let me know. And I'm your host, as always. Stay tuned for part three tomorrow. Over and out.